Copyright, University of South Australia. This recording may contain third-party copyright material. Apart from any use permitted under the Copyright Act 1968, no part of this recording may be reproduced or rebroadcast by any means or process without the prior written permission of the University of South Australia and the copyright owners. So here we're going to have a look at the peritoneum. The peritoneum is the layers of tissue which line the organs and this is broken down into a few different layers. We have the visceral, the parietal, and these two layers here, when they come together and wrap around the organ, they're going to make what we know as the mesentery. Now the mesentery is a structure which is going to be supporting the organ. Uh, it allows arteries, nerves and veins to get to the organs and it's a good place to store your visceral fat. So here what we can see is we can see that the vertebral column exists at the back of the body or the posterior abdominal wall. We have the pubic symphysis or the pubis to the front here, the sacrum to the back and this is the muscle of the rectus abdominis giving us the diaphragm at this level here. So this is our abdominal cavity here. If we included this, it would be the abdomino-pelvic cavity as described in your lecture. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some of the organs into their place so that we can then line them with either their visceral or parietal layers of peritoneum and support them by the mesentery. So using some different colours to represent these different organs, we're going to put the liver in first. Now we know the liver is going to exist right up against the diaphragmatic surface here. So the liver is going to sit in approximately this position here, leaving a little bit of space uh, against the abdominal wall there so that you can draw the mesentery in a little bit later. We're going to need to have then the stomach. So the stomach is going to sit below the liver, um, coming into contact almost with the anterior abdominal wall. Then we have other organs like the pancreas. So the pancreas sits um, about the L1, L2 level, just pop it in there like that. Then we're going to need to have the duodenum. So the duodenum is going to sit just underneath that like there. Then we need the large and the small intestine. So just underneath the stomach, we're going to have the transverse colon. So the transverse colon will sit in about that position there approximately. And then we need all of the different parts of the ilium and jejunum. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw some circles that are going to exist just inside this lower part of the abdominal cavity here so that we can support these with the mesentery. Now from here, because we have our organs in place, so we have our liver, our stomach, our transverse colon, our small intestine, the duodenum here, and the pancreas here. We can't see the kidneys because we're looking in a sagittal section. So because it's been sliced down the center, the kidneys would either be further into the page or out of the page to the left and the right sides of the body. So using two more different colors now, we're going to make the visceral and parietal peritoneum. Now the parietal peritoneum, is the structure which lines the body wall. So using the pink colour here, the parietal peritoneum is going to line the body wall and extend slightly towards the organ. So the, if you start up with the liver, there's an area of the liver which is not covered by peritoneum and we call this area here up its upper um, posterior superior surface as the bare area. Then the parietal peritoneum will come and line right against the body wall. It then extends down and runs across the superior surface of the bladder, comes down between the bladder and the rectum here. And now in the case of the female, this would run also over the top of the uterus and then go behind the uterus and to the rectum. But in this one here, we're drawing uh, the sagittal section of the male. It then runs up along like this on the anterior surface of the rectum uh, coming across the top here like this and then to the posterior body wall. Now from the posterior body wall we're going to have a few structures sitting in behind it. So a structure that's going to sit 
just anterior to the vertebral column and then deep or behind the peritoneum in this case is going to be something like the aorta and the inferior vena cava. So we're going to leave a little bit of a gap so we can draw them into that space there. Otherwise we extend that parietal peritoneum up to the inferior aspect of the duodenum here. It then wraps forward like this and gives an extension which comes downward like this. If we come back to the top here, what we can see is this one will come down along like this. We'll cover the anterior aspect of the pancreas and then give an extension off toward the transverse colon like this. It then comes back along and we'll then wrap onto the front of the duodenum here and then give an extension off toward the small intestine. So these extensions of the parietal uh, peritoneum are con going toward contributing to the mesentery. So using a different color now for the visceral peritoneum, we're going to need to attach these two layers together. So if we run along the organ now, so the visceral peritoneum is meaning that it will come into contact with the organ. So it's going to run along the anterior surface of the liver like this and wrap all the way under the liver and to where we've left this little gap here. So what we know about the liver is we have veins coming in, an artery coming in and a bile duct coming out. So we kind of need to leave a little space for those structures to move in and out of. So you get a small extension here which allows those structures to enter and exit and we call this bit the lesser omentum. Now the lesser omentum extends between the lesser curvature of the stomach and the liver and is a special um, type of the peritoneum we call as omentum which we'll discuss a little bit more detail uh, in a minute. But then from there you can see that this part of the visceral peritoneum will come forward in front of the stomach and this part of the peritoneum will come behind the stomach. All right. Now from there these two will now hang down the most anterior inside this abdominal cavity and make the greater omentum instead. So the lesser extends upward from the stomach and the greater hangs down, kind of like an apron. So from there, this one comes down all the way like this. Then it comes up and comes into contact with the transverse colon here. This one then comes also. Now what you should notice is we have one, two layers to the front. It's gonna go all the way to the bottom. It's then gonna wrap on itself. Can you see how now it's come around inside and we have now two layers to the back. So now we have one, two, three, four effective layers which are making up the greater momentum. Now then this inner layer here comes along the front of the transverse colon and attaches to the extension we call here the transverse mesocolon. So this is the mesentery for the transverse colon. This one then, that comes up to the lower side, comes around this way and comes up there. So can you see now what we've done is we've made a complete sac here, which is fully enclosed and we call this the lesser sac. From there, we need to put the mesentery around the small intestines so we can bring this down, attach it around like this. Then we need to attach all of the different little bits to see how we're going to make this layer here of the visceral peritoneum come and wrap around all of those uh, parts of the small intestine. So you can see this part here is now kind of continuous with this open space at the back. And what that's going to allow for is the aorta to come down and give its branches into this to supply it with blood, also to drain it, and also to give it the, neuro, um, the neural supply. So the nerves coming from the sympathetic nervous system, which comes from the thoracic level, will travel in and down here and then innervate these different parts. So we have the layers of peritoneum, the, vis uh, the visceral and the parietal. Then we have where it joins, this is what we call and consider the mesentery. So this extension here is called the transverse mesocolon. 
And this part of the mesentery here is for the small intestine. Then here we have a special one called the lesser omentum and a special one here called the greater omentum, which we'll label um, after. So if we're gonna put the artery in so that we get some supply to these structures here, we know that the heart is going to exist inside the thoracic cavity and it's going to exist between the T5 to T9 regions. All right, so we can see the T9 region here and then coming from the upper part of the heart, we're going to have the arch of the aorta, we remember that. So coming from the arch of the aorta, you have those three primary branches at the top. So the, on the, this go to the right side of the body. This is left common carotid and then left subclavian will be coming off here. All right, so left arm, right arm. This one then arches back like this and comes down the posterior aspect of the thorax. So this is going to continue downward as one of the mo more posterior structures just in front of the thoracic vertebrae and the lumbar vertebrae as it travels down. It's going to give three branches. So we have three different sections. We have what we call as the foregut, which is kind of here. Then we have the midgut and then the hindgut. Now these three arteries are going to be uh, drawn shortly to, to tell you which ones they supply. But we have three arteries, one that goes to the foregut, one that goes to the midgut, and one that goes to the hindgut. So if we bring the aorta down like this, what we get is an arterial branch which comes from about the T12 level here and then comes out, passes through the mesentery to supply things like the liver uh, and the stomach, as well as a bit of the pancreas and the duodenum at its proximal end. The next one we're going to have, which comes down, is going to emerge from the L1 level, whereby it's called the superior mesenteric. Now the superior mesenteric artery supplies the midgut, so it gives a branch off can you see here coming through the transverse mesocolon to supply the transverse colon? It then gives branches which go to the ileum and the jejunum. Okay, so that's our superior mesentric artery there. And then further to that, at the L3 level, we have one that comes out and supplies the hindgut. And we call this the inferior mesentric artery. And then finally, from if you remember from weeks one and two, at the L4 level here, this is where it's going to go and divide into its uh, left and right uh, common iliac arteries. So let's have a, a chat about the mesentery in a little bit more detail. So if we have the stomach, so the stomach we know is a J-shaped organ. So it comes like this, has a little angle, and then it comes like that. So this part here, this is what we call the greater curvature. And this part here is what we call the lesser curvature. So the greater omentum extends like a fatty apron from the greater curvature downward, and the lesser omentum extends upward from the lesser curvature to the liver. So they are those two layers of omentum. So here the lesser represented here, and here the greater represented here. Then we're going to have the three arteries. So if we have the abdominal aorta coming down like this, we have an artery which comes off at T12, this one over here. This is what we call the celiac trunk. So the celiac trunk supplies the liver, the spleen, and the stomach from its primary branches. And then other branches of these small arteries will go and supply other organs in the foregut region. The next one is going to be the superior mesenteric artery. So we said that the supermersentric artery comes from the L1 level and the celiac trunk comes from the T12 level. From there, you have at L3, you have the inferior mesentric artery. And then at the L4 level from weeks one and two, we remember the two common iliac arteries. Now the superior mesentric artery, this one here, SMA for short, and inferior mesentric artery, I, MA for short. This is going to supply things like the duodenum, the ileum, the jejunum, ascending colon, and the transverse colon. 
The inferior mesentric artery is going to supply a little bit of the transverse colon as well. The descending and the sigmoid colons. So we can see that these three parts here, the celiac trunk, this is going to supply what we call as the four gut. Then the SMA supplies the mid gut and the IMA, inferior mesentric artery, supplies the hind gut. Okay, now that's just a bit of a, um, a thing for you guys to remember. So just know the names of the artery and the region of the gut that it supplies. Now, you're wondering how all this comes together. So if we have a look at this uh, peritoneum in its position here that we've drawn, we have an embryo here. So this is kind of like 50 days of development. So you've got a little arm, you've got a little eye, you've got a little uh, foot going on here, and this is where the umbilicus comes in. So if we can imagine that the gut will be forming inside this region here, then what we're going to have is a few different layers of the body. So this outer layer of the body here is called the ectoderm. Now the ectoderm ends up being your skin. All right, that's nice. Then we have the inner layer of the body, which is going to be this pink layer, effectively. So let's draw it as that pink layer. This is going to be what we call as the endoderm. Now, if we draw it in like a little circular fashion here to try and make a little bit 3D. So that wraps around the body like this, and then there are small extensions of it. Can you see those small extensions of it? So in here and here, let's put an organ in, let's say the stomach just as a grow, little, you know, growing, developing uh, organ bud inside the body. And then finally to that, you have a layer of what we call as the mesoderm, which then wraps around that structure. It goes through a few different layers of like folding and does some pretty fancy stuff. But realistically, I hope that helps you understand kind of how it develops. From there, arteries, nerves, and veins follow these little connections here of the mesoderm. So we said that the pink was the endoderm in this case. And the blue is representing that mesoderm. So then if we just write a few functions of the peritoneum, we have support of the organs. We have passage for nerves, arteries, and veins. We have protection in the form of the greater omentum, as an example. We have storage of fat. Okay, and this is energy reserves for when it gets cold and you. Uh, aren't um, eating, as an example, and then it also allows the gut to be mobile. Now, what this means is as your food passes through the gut, so it doesn't get tangled up, you know, like you've just eaten something and you've gone on a roller coaster. All right, thanks very much. Now, um, what I might do is label all of it.